What's up, you guys? It's Misha from the Spa Blueprint, and I am back with another video. So today, we're going to briefly discuss what I wish I knew before becoming a massage therapist part two. Okay, if you haven't seen part one, I'll leave a link. Check the left or the right side of the corner of the video, and I'll leave a link to go watch that first because I did leave some gems in there. But yeah, so this is part two. Okay, number one. Okay, massage business is easy to start up, but challenging to keep afloat. The first year is a grind. I wish I knew that before I got into this business, that it's a, a grind. The first year is a grind, and it's not going to be money overnight. I mean, depending on what area you're in, you might do see it like the first month might be like, whoo, a lot of clients because you're new coming in there's going to be a lot of people coming in but then it's going to be a month where you don't see barely any clients so the first year is a grind and you need to save your money just because you have a good date on me yay and you know spend your money all willy-nilly put the money up for your slow days because the first year is still a grind it might be cool for the first three months then the three months after that might be horrible you don't know what it's going to be for you i just suggest putting your money up two years Prepare yourself for slow days. It is a grind. Number two, no matter what, it is going to be wear and tear on your body. You know how you have a, a nice shirt that you have for a long time? But no matter what, you put that shirt on in two years, you might have put it on about a good about a good 10 times or a good 20 times. It's your shirt. You put it on as much as you want. But it's not going to be the same as it was the first time you got the shirt. So our body is the same way. Do the proper body mechanics and make sure you're doing the proper movements. When you're massaging people, don't use your thumbs so much. Don't overuse it. Um, I had issues with my hands and my wrist. I still do. Just ice your hands and stuff. But there is wear and tear on your body. There's wear and tear on anything that you use a lot and use often. We're using our bodies to help others with healing and pain. So that is what, you know, that is what's going to be wear and tear. Your body. No matter what, I don't care what anybody tells you. It's wear and tear on your body. However, you can prevent like injury or anything just based on using proper body mechanics. Number three, requirements for different states and cities are different no matter where you go. It's going to be different. So some people say, hey, you need a business license. If you're going to have a suite as a massage therapist, you still need a business license even if you work for yourself. Um, they might want an inspection. They want to inspect the place. Liability fees. You got to hang up your business license on the wall. So some clients may want to look and be nosy and see your real name. Um, some people, some cities want a recommendation letter. Ain't that crazy? What the hell? If I pay my fee and I want to go into business, I want to use my money to go into business. I need somebody to recommend me. Okay, that's crazy, but okay. And, you know, your massage certs have to be on the wall. So, it's different for different states. I'm not saying every state requires this, but you will find out that a lot of them do. Number four, don't charge too low. There's a such thing as charging too low. Okay? You want to be competitive with your pricing. You want to, you know, stand out. I know you're new. So, you want to be competitive for sure. I agree with that. However, don't charge too low. Like... At that point, you're just attracting very, very cheap clients. And you don't want that for the long run. However, you don't want to charge too high either. Because it's like, what? Who are you? Do I even know you're going to turn people away? So you want a happy medium. Just a little bit under the competition. Just a little slightly under. Not too much under. Okay, there's a such thing as charging too low. Okay, just slightly under. Just to be a little competitive, but not too low that people are going to look at you like, eh okay I'm about to get over or you know like oh that's real cheap all the cheap people gonna come out Woo! you saw that $40 for a massage a... listen don't do that <laughs> okay gas is high you see everybody else they're going up on groceries they're going up on fruits vegetables everything you can name eggs are going up why are people going up on their massages that go up three for four dollars what is that? That's not going to pay your bills. I don't understand why this massage industry, everybody's so scared to go up on their prices, like, because they're just scared of 
not getting clients and stuff like no we have to go up we have to stay together we have to charge accordingly we're using our bodies for healing it's a lot of stress on the body after so many years of doing this so i just really <laughs> i got some against that like when people want to oh you know they've been used to a certain price so they want to keep it the same price not realizing how much stress it is on your body during this industry we do it because we love it and we enjoy it and it, it provides us flexibility and freedom to live a certain lifestyle and do what we want as we please but don't take advantage of us don't do it i'm not gonna let anybody do it to me and i don't want y'all to let anybody do it to y'all number five it's easy to burn out you know it's a lot of massage therapists that burn out in the first three months burn out in the first six months or the first year and don't give up if you're gonna get into this business just know that it's very very easy to quit and burn out and be done and be over with it like i'm that's it i'm done but stick it out the first year is a grind just know that it's you know it's gonna be rocky in the beginning because you're trying to find your way what's your niche what's your audience who you know who's your tribe who wants to be your client you know and finding those people it could be a struggle, but that's with any business. And it's easy to burn out because we're using our bodies. Like, I, I, I keep, can't stress that enough. We're using our bodies, okay? And a lot of people like to downplay that um, it's wear and tear on the body. Like, you're just not using it right. You have to use your elbows. You can use your elbows all day. You're still using your body. It's your body. You're, this is all together, okay? All, all of this together. I, you don't know how many therapists I know that's older and they say, oh, my body is in pain or I got aches and pains or my wrists. I have wrist issues with my wrists. It's not a joke just because, oh, you know, you're a spring chicken now or you're young and thriving or you anywhere from 20 to 50 and you're good now. But later, there comes a time where your body will feel the results of massaging for over 20 years or 15 years. So just take care of yourself. You'll be fine and just do the proper body mechanics. But just know that it's easy to burn out and you just have to take care of yourself and take time to do your self-care. It's just as important as making money is your self-care. And last but not least, number six, taxes. It's hard to give up taxes. When you make some money, you know, you want to pay bills. You don't want to give up your money to Uncle Sam. You do not want to pay taxes because it's like, listen, I had a whole two weeks of being slow. Then the third week all of a sudden was was popping. You had clients here in your house. Man, you made four five hundred dollars But then you realize, oh, let me put some of this up for taxes. And then you're like, damn, should I? Or <laughs> Because I have to pay rent. It's really hard. So try to pay your taxes quarterly. Try to pay your taxes quarterly and keep all your expenses, receipts, keep it a record of it. And file your taxes because you don't realize that you might end up getting a refund anyway, especially if it's not even, if like you didn't make much or if everything evens out, you might end up getting a refund. So. Go ahead and file. Just go ahead and find other ways to supplement your income in the first year just so you don't quit because it's so rewarding when you stick it out. When you stick it out, you find your niche and you find your way. You figure out like, oh, this is what I got to do. Oh, this is how, oh, these are the people that like me. I think this is what I'm good at. This, you know, so you might not want to go straight out and get a suite. You might want to do mobile. You might want to do part time. You want to rent somewhere once a week or something. Starting off like that. You know, don't you might not want to dedicate a whole, uh, get a whole suite, and you don't know what you're doing yet. So, start off with something like that. So, you know, slowly work your way in until you're ready to be full time with it as a business owner of your spa business. Okay, that was my part two of what I wish I knew before becoming a massage therapist. What is something that you wish you knew before you got into this industry? Even if you're new, there's always something that you learn. Like, dang, I did not know this about this industry. This is crazy. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share with a friend. Share with your spypreneur friends. And I will catch y'all in the next video. Peace.